Hello and welcome. We're aware that certain drugs can affect healing of bone following extractions or other surgery involving bone, and it can lead to medication-related osteonecrosis of the jaw. Now, this explainer video is going to look at two of the main players that dental professionals are very aware of, bisphosphonates and denosumab, most commonly known by one of its brand names, uh, Prolia. Now, how are they different and how do they work? Well, stay tuned. I'm Dr. Steve Parker, and this is Dental Chat. So what are bisphosphonates and denosumab used for? Well, let's kick this off by reminding ourselves exactly what these drugs are used for. Both of these medications play a crucial role in treating diseases characterized by weakened bones or excessive bone loss, such as osteoporosis, Paget's disease, osteogenesis imperfecta, and bone metastases and multiple myeloma. Now, both treatments aim to strengthen bones, reduce the risk of fractures, and improve quality of life uh, for patients facing the challenge of bone diseases. Now, here you can see the difference in the quality of normal bone and weakened bone. So understanding the foundation of bone health requires diving into the world of osteoblasts and osteoclasts, the yin and yang of bone remodeling. Osteoblasts are the architects and builders of the bone world. On the other hand, uh, we have osteoclasts. Now, these are the demolition crew. Uh, these cells break down old or damaged bone tissue in a process called bone resorption, making space for new bone to be formed by osteoblasts. Okay, so let's have a look at the basics. We have the osteoblasts and the osteoclasts. Now the osteoblasts are involved with bone formation. They're involved with bone matrix formation, regulation of mineralization and rankle production. Now the osteoclasts, well they're mainly involved with bone resorption. And so they uh, dissolve mineral matrix, digest organic matrix, and have rankle sensitivity. Now, that begs the question, what's this rankle stuff anyway? Well, it actually stands for receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand. Now, let us never say those words again. Uh, I'm sure that uh, has caused distress in many of you. Um, so let's wipe that and just remember it as rankle. Okay, so, Let's have a deep dive into rank and rankle. So here we have our osteoblasts and our osteoclasts. And we have an immature osteoclast. So the rank or the receptor is found on the immature osteoclast and the osteoclast. The rankle is produced by the osteoblast. And the rankle goes along and attaches to the rank receptor. Now in doing that, it initiates differentiation of the immature osteoclast and matures it into an osteoclast. While directly on the osteoclast, it enhances activity and increases survival of the osteoclast. So it has a couple of different functions there. So remodeling must be in balance. If it is, we're happy. If it's not, the bone becomes weak. So, basically, the aim of using drugs like bisphosphonates and denosumab is to alter the balance of bone remodeling, primarily by decreasing osteoclast activity. So let's have a, a good look at the bisphosphonates. They're normally administered orally or intravenously. A mechanism, they bind to the bone mineral itself and inhibit osteoclast-mediated bone resorption. You can see the osteoclast, you can see the bisphosphonate in the bone, and the osteoclast ingests the bisphosphonate, which causes cell death. And so the osteoclastic activity is decreased. The effect is it decreases bone resorption, increased bone density, reduces fracture risk. Now let's look at denosumab. Again, you can see our osteoblast, our osteoclast, and we can see the osteoclast precursor there. The brand names that you will be used to for denosumab, of course, is Prolia for osteoporosis, and exgiva for bone metastasy. It's uh, administered subcutaneously uh, every six months for prolia or every four weeks for exgiva. So how does it work? Well, it's a monoclonal antibody that binds to and inhibits the rank hole. 
preventing osteoclast formation and activity. Here we have the denosumab, and it's basically preventing the rankle from reaching the rank uh, receptors, which means that they're not matured into osteoclasts. And on the osteoclasts themselves, it causes cell death. So again, we have osteoclastic activity decreased. This reduces bone resorption, increases bone density, and decreases fracture risk. So if we were to compare the bisphosphonates and denosumab, their mechanism of action, bisphosphonates inhibit osteoclasts by binding to bone minerals, whereas denosumab is a monoclonal antibody. Now it's administered, bisphosphonates uh, usually orally, but can be given IV as well. And denosumab is given as a subcutaneous injection. Duration, well, bisphosphonates have long lasting action. And this is simply because they're integrated into the bone itself, whereas denosumab has a relatively short half-life and requires ongoing administration. So I hope that helps explain some of the differences between bisphosphonate and denosumab and how they work. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe and like the video. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.